Okay. Finished my morning meetup. I had a, a breakfast and, oops, what are we doing? Where are you going there, fella? Forward, back, where are you going? Uh, finished my morning meetup and I'm gonna head down to the uh, Bering Hardware store and pick up my coffee. Uh, I mentioned that in one of my camping videos, moto camping videos. I uh, buy all my coffee beans from Bering Hardware here in Houston. They get their stuff from a local roaster. Uh, it's Duncan, D-U-N-C-A-N, coffee house or Duncan coffee roaster, something like that. And uh, it's really good stuff. Their, their normal roasts are great. Uh, they've got a lot of flavored stuff. I tend to do the flavored stuff, uh, not anything real fancy, but I do like the hazelnut. And there's uh, the one that I get is a golden pecan, and it's really good. There's chunks of pecans in the, in the blend that's really tasty. I think it has a touch of vanilla in it as well. It's pretty good stuff. That's my favorite blend. So I buy five pound bags of that and it lasts me, I don't know, four to six weeks usually. Yeah, these are pretty big bumps through here. Cub handles all this stuff real well. On the other scooters, the PCXs, uh, uh, these are pretty rough. Wow, H-E-B is gone, really? I haven't been through here in so long, I didn't know that happened. That was one of the first big H-E-B stores that we got here in Houston, or at least in this part of Houston. Um, I lived over in this area for 10 plus years, and uh, that was always our go-to store right there. And it's gone. And they built the building, I mean, the whole, the, the decor, the checkered front, that's their signature style, so, interesting. I wonder why they abandoned the building. Rent got too high, who knows. I'm sure the building was theirs, the land is somebody else's, it's pretty typical for Texas, or this area anyway, and uh, maybe the landlord got greedy. <coughs> Wake up. Gone, gone. Well, I wonder when that happened. Or if there's another one that's open nearby, maybe that's it. They moved to greener pastures. Who knows? spots. All right, fine. I'll turn it to the street and advertise. Let everybody see the cub. Okay. So this is uh, Bearings Hardware. It's more than a hardware store. They've got everything in there. They have appliances, flowers, cards, you name it. It's, uh, it's kind of a little boutique uh, hardware store slash everything gift store and uh, they have coffees and uh, uh, 
gourmet chocolates and all kinds of stuff. So we'll go in there and get the coffee that I want. All right, so now the real trick is uh, getting 11 pounds of coffee in this little uh, collapsible backpack because <laughs> I didn't bring any other luggage for the cub out there. So squeeze all the air out of these as much as I can. See if they'll uh, compress down. I can get them in there sideways. I think it'll work. I might find out that I'm wrong. We'll see. Nope, it's going to work. Look at that. We hope, we hope. Uh-oh, maybe not. I can make it happen. Maybe, maybe. Oh, oh, oh. It's getting tight. Let's see if he can pack out 11 pounds of coffee in a tiny little bag. And it has been paid for, by the way. I already checked out. Okay, I think he made it work. Did he do it? Did he do it? Yes, indeed. Oh, ho, barely. Okay, so I'm sure when Bear Grylls uh, made this bag, this was the last thing he had in mind. Packing out 11 pounds of coffee from a hardware store. <laughs> made it work. So, there we go. She is uh, full, almost to capacity, with coffee. So, coffee run on the Cub. The Cub coffee run. Got to... Uh, Bearings hardware and 11 pounds of coffee. That'll last for uh, hopefully a couple months. I don't know. The way my family's going through it lately, it might not. The only drawback about this uh, particular pack is it doesn't have a uh, uh, waist strap or a chest strap or anything. Pretty lightweight bag. It's not made for kind of abuse I'm giving it, but. That's all right. I like the fact that it folds down into its own little pouch. Uh, ends up about the size of a tennis ball. When you fold it into itself, secure the little drawstring on the top. Okay. I do like the smart key. Don't need to go fishing in my pocket, so I just leave it zipped up in my pocket. And Away I go. Make sure my camera angle's okay, and off we go. I'm gonna go out that way. Looks like I might beat some of the traffic too, let's see. Yep, good to go. Okay, off we go. Yeah, this bag feels funny. It's got very narrow, thin little straps on the shoulders. Uh, it's not very heavy duty. There's no padding of any kind. Whoops, second gear. Uh, there's no padding of any kind, so it kind of digs in, cuts into you. It's all right. And pressing it into a chore that it was never designed to do. And Barnes & Noble is gone. Boy, this whole area is just running out of businesses. That was a giant Barnes & Noble there for years. And I uh, used to shop and peruse magazines and you know, stand around and read magazines, drink their coffee. 
I think that's probably a, a business that's on the way out. They're going the way of the dinosaur because all of the online book sales these days through Google and Amazon and everything else, uh, I just don't know how brick and mortar stores can stay in business. It's great if you want to sit around and read the books and drink coffee and, you know, kind of browse the selection, so to speak, and put your hands on it for print media. But at the same time, that usually does a bit of a disservice to that retailer because people are reading it for free. They're not buying it. And uh, that it's just, I don't know where the, the profitability or the margins are in that. Ooh, that was some kind of car show. Cool. Vets. A whole lot of vets. Wow. If I could get turned around, I'd go back and look at that. I'm doing it. I'm going to go back, figure out a way to get back around to that. I don't have a vet, but I wouldn't mind looking at their toys. Okay, so it was right through here somewhere. Yep, there it is. All right, how do I get in? I'm sure nobody's gonna run me over. All right. And this particular tune was taken from a movie that kind of touched us all. And it was taken from this very famous movie, Saturday Night Fever. So check wow, check out. all these out. I don't know if I'm supposed to be driving through here or not, but... That's a lot of vets, man. Cool. I don't think I'm supposed to be driving through here, but it was still open to the public on the uh, driveway. <laughs> Haven't had a vet in a long time get rid of mine because it just wasn't practical for my life at the time and I was paying way too much in insurance but I was much younger I was paying as much in my insurance as I was for my monthly car note and that just wasn't working out for me more vets over on this side but they must not be in the uh, in the show they're just spectating cool get out of the way a lot of vets okay well I saw it not really my speed so I'm not gonna hang around, but this is very cool. As I recall, uh, Corvette groups and Corvette clubs, they're uh, pretty exclusive, uh, about as much so as uh, Harley owners. Uh, if you don't have one of theirs, you're not really invited into their club. <laughs> That's all right. You can have your club. I have no entitlement issues. I don't want to be part of a club that doesn't want to be a part of me. I don't have any particular uh, hate toward Harleys. I don't like them, uh, just for the uh, noise and the vibration and the mechanical unreliabilities, but uh, I was actually looking at one of the new uh, Fat Bob, I think it's called, Fat Bob Street Bob, whatever, with the big 114 motor in it. Uh, that's a good looking bike. It's. Uh, a modern take on a you know naked muscle cruiser looks pretty good and uh, I was I was giving it a good hard look but they're not cheap they're just shy of 20 grand little 
rich for my blood on a bike anyway and uh, I just don't know about the reliability and the maintenance and all that a lot of panhandlers out on this corner today Got a really pretty one over there hanging out in traffic with a cardboard sign female panhandling that's something I've seen a, a rise on a rise of in Houston lately this is a looks like a Latin lady over there very attractive shapely I'm quite sure she's not homeless I don't know what her sign says she's too far away it's an interesting uh, trend I've noticed typically that's a, a male hobby or profession or life circumstance whatever you want to call it uh, very rare that you see women standing out on the street corners panhandling for money or move food or whatever it is she's too far down in traffic we're not going to be able to see her but pretty lady it's one thing about human nature and uh, life in general Attractive women, pretty ladies, uh, they, they never go wanting. There's always a man somewhere that will be happy to cater to them, take care of them. And that is perfectly okay. That's how our world and society has been for millennia. Nothing new there. The new part is the panhandling bit. I don't know about that. I would think that would be a little dangerous female because if you're out in traffic and there's plenty of people around then chances of something really nefarious happening are pretty low so I was wide open coming up that hill uh, and I'm going against the wind right now and I was not able to accelerate past 38 or 40 uh, I could have stayed in third gear and gotten better acceleration but they just didn't have the oomph to uh, pull up the hill and fight the wind at the same time. A lot of trash on the road today. What is all this? I love the view in these uh, CRGs try to angle my chin and put my eyes the other way so I don't run off the road but you can see everything edge to edge on the road both sides you do still have a little bit of a blind spot from your body uh, just the angle of the mirror but that's why I went ahead and put two on here but for most riding situations the one on the left will get you everything you need Houston traffic's a little more dangerous, a little more aggressive, so I wanted the safety of having that second one on there just to know if somebody's hiding in my over my right shoulder. I always head check when I lane change anyway, but uh, as fast and aggressive as the drivers are here in Houston, you can have someone sneak up on you out of nowhere real fast, you know, just a matter of a couple seconds because they're doing, you know, 15, 20 over the limit, even on the surface streets. And uh, they'll just appear <laughs> pretty much out of nowhere. You won't realize that they're there. You'll do a head check, nothing will be there. You wait a couple seconds and then you go to lane change and they'll be there. about the spider fest of course you know while i ride i've always got a million things in my head um, <laughs> if if it wasn't a spider fest you know for rikers and spiders and three-wheel uh, vehicles i would love to do something crazy like ride the cub all the way up there to arkansas and missouri that would be a really fun adventure but i don't see any point in going up to a spider fest on a cub Need to take the Riker. Oh.
that's another one of those safety and traffic things. Uh, anytime you get stuck with a red light, you know, a quick yellow or a quick red, on a bike, if you're not an experienced rider, you need to learn this tip and learn it now before you end up getting run over, because I see it all the time in Houston. Um, you, a bike can always outbreak a car, uh, and typically, especially in a small bike like this, you're probably moving slower than the flow of traffic anyway, because they're hauling ass. If you nail the brakes to stop for one of these lights, you better look over your shoulder uh, before you really apply those brakes, because you might have a car barreling up on you that is already going too fast, they're already closing on you, and you just drastically uh, increase that overtake rate when you hit your brakes. So they're gonna be, uh, have, gonna have a hard time stopping before they run you over. So that's a habit of mine that I've had for 30 plus years. Anytime I grab a handful of brakes, I look over my shoulder before I do it. And if I, I still have to brake and I can't blow the intersection or you know avoid whatever I make sure that I've got an out to one side or another to uh, squirt around you know a stop car in front of me or whatever it is that I'm suddenly braking for it's assess look look and then act uh, and I'll shorten that by going ahead and starting the braking process the deceleration but I'm actively looking in three places at once I'm looking here here and anywhere for an evasion uh, and that's the only thing that saved me uh, conservatively it saved me hundreds and hundreds of times in traffic uh, if I had nailed my brakes and not looked over my shoulder I would have been a hood ornament if I had continued to brake and not go ahead and release the brake and evade I would have been smashed into another car sandwiched between two or three other cars and I, I can't count the number of accidents where I've had to squirt by on the shoulder uh, which you know is technically illegal but hey I don't care about being illegal as long as I'm alive and I'm upright uh, and in those situations multiple times you know there'll be a car barreling up behind me screeching the tires I have to hit the brakes I see them coming up on me I've got no choice and I release the brakes and squirt around and they'll end up nailing the car that I was coming up behind so ooh, sandwich game no thanks just a matter of being hyper aware and uh, always treating riding as a chess game uh, you've always got to look two or three moves ahead you've always got to think about what's going to happen and be planning in advance for that before it happens just assume that the worst is going to happen uh, that way you're already prepared for it and then if it doesn't happen hey, you're just ahead of the game Uh, with my cameras most of the time doing the ride vlogs I'm slowly amassing uh, a lot of safety footage uh, things that I have to avoid rather suddenly and bad drivers and like I talked about earlier today the my idea for the douchebag of the week awards that thing um, I've got a lot of footage uh, that would probably be good uh, to put together for safety riding you know that sort of thing um, I don't know. I'll see how everybody thinks about that, what your opinions are, and if anyone thinks that's useful, I'll try to put something like that together. Uh, I know a lot of the demographic that's been watching my videos lately are older riders, or you know, older people, let's say. I don't know that they're older riders, but it seems like the demographic uh, info from YouTube is saying that it's a lot of uh, 45 to 65 year old uh, males predominantly. And uh, I don't know if these are experienced riders or guys that have been out that are just, you know, looking at new toys and that sort of thing. Uh, but for any of the new riders out there uh, that are watching the channel and you're thinking about getting a bike, if you're in town and you're going to be doing commuting and the stuff that I do, uh, it, again, I don't mean to preach to anyone, but... A lot of the riding tactics uh, and the experience that I have over the last 34 years and just shy of two million miles on two wheels uh, it's kept me upright I haven't had any accidents I haven't ever had a ticket or an accident on a bike uh, and I've never been down on the street so I guess what I'm doing must work 
because uh, that, that's a pretty, pretty bold claim, and it is the truth. So statistics don't lie. Um, and I know that riding is not for everyone. Uh, there are a lot of people that get into it because of the allure of riding. It's, you know, it's cool, it's sexy, it looks like fun. But I don't actively recommend it to everyone. You have to have the right mindset to be a successful motorcyclist and not end up on the pavement somewhere or in intensive care or worse. Um, some people just don't have it. And it's not that they're mentally incapable of it or that they're inferior or anything like that. I, that's not my, that's not what I'm saying. It's just a matter of focus. And uh, if you're one of those people that likes to daydream and goof off and text while you drive, a motorcycle's not for you, period. Don't do it. You do it, you're begging for trouble. That's just all there is to it. You are going to end up in an accident or cause an accident because uh, on a bike you cannot be inattentive. You've always got to be paying attention because other people don't see you or they don't care. And uh, that whole uh, let them hit me mentality, you know, that might work in a car, it doesn't work on a bike. If they hit you, you're down. Anyway, I don't want to end this on a negative note. It's a nice Saturday. I'm going to get this backpack off of my back. Probably just go farting around on the Cub some more. I want to offload this video, and I'm going to take a, uh, a quick listen to the two microphones and see how it is. If the new microphone's better, I'll leave it in the helmet. Otherwise, I'm going to strip the secondary gear here and uh, lighten my load.